Hello, and welcome to the first episode ever of the Inside Java podcast. My name is Chad Arimira, and this is my co-host. Hi, I'm David Delabasi. And in this podcast series, we're going to take our understanding of Java to the next level by talking directly to the experts who built the platform itself. David and I work on the developer relations team inside the Java platform group at Oracle. It's also commonly known as developer evangelism, developer advocacy, whatever the name du jour is. At the end of the day, we focus on the vibrancy of the Java ecosystem and community. And we do this by immersing ourselves in the community, trying to deeply understand the developer experience and sentiment, and talking to developers, going to conferences now mostly virtually. We launched Inside.Java back in May. And if you haven't seen it yet, go to Inside.Java and you'll see a curated list of content produced by the Java team. And of course, this podcast that you're listening to, which is really about featuring the people behind the content. So Chad, you mentioned GPG. We should explain what the Java Platform Group is doing, because I'm pretty sure that there are not a lot of people outside of Oracle that knows what GPG is doing. Yeah, the team here works on almost every aspect of Java, everywhere from the Java Virtual Machine, which is just an incredible piece of machinery that runs your Java application, and you most likely don't have to think much about it. Uh, All of the features and functionality that go along with that, the garbage collection, performance, serviceability, all on top of multiple platforms. Of course, there's the language features. Um, We have some of the world's foremost architects that are thinking about not only what Java looks like today, but what it should look like tomorrow and a thoughtful path to get there. We could spend a ton of time talking about stewardship and language design, but there's some great talks by Mark Reinhold and Brian Getz, and we'll put those in the show notes. Um, There's the compilers, there's the Java language specification, the JVM specification, the TCK, uh, the Java APIs and the tooling, JLink, JDK, Flight Recorder, JPackage, there's build and test infrastructure, documentation, and QA. Uh, and of course, there's the sustaining teams that uh, work on long term support versions of the Oracle JDK and the support groups that manage all of our customers and the product teams that help bring this all together and our developer relations team. Yeah, and the list goes on. There are many folks, many engineers behind Java at Oracle. Yeah, exactly. And with the six-month release cadence, there's a lot of new stuff coming out at a pretty fast pace. Why don't you tell us about some of the ongoing projects? Sure. So the different teams are working on multiple ambitious long-term projects such as Panama, Valhalla, Loom, Humber, and so on. The goal of those projects is either to develop new uh, large features, ZGC is a good example, or completely revamp some aspect of the Java platform. Loom, Valhalla... Uh, Amber are a good example of such projects. Let's take ZGC, for example. So ZGC is a new low-latency garbage collector. Uh, It's a concurrent GC, meaning that most of the GC work is done while the Java threads continue to run. And that really limits uh, the impact the GC has on the application response time. So with ZGC, you will have very short post time, typically just around a few milliseconds. But... What's important is that those post time will not increase even with larger heap or increased life set. ZGC can handle small heap uh, from a few megabyte heap to very large heap, up to 16 terabyte heap. ZGC was introduced as an experimental hotspot feature in GDK 11. Back then it was on Linux only, and since then uh, support for additional platform has been added. ZGC will be a standard hotspot feature in GDK 15. Project Amber is another one. Amber's goal uh, is to deliver productivity-oriented Java language features, so reducing syntactic sugar, uh, write code more easily where it makes sense, improve code reliability, and so on. Amber has already delivered quite some features. We can mention local variable type inference in Java 10, uh, the switch expression, now standard in uh, Java 14, text blocks, which will uh, become standard in GDK 15, uh, pattern matching uh, of instance of, I believe in second preview in 15, uh, sealed class, which will be introduced as a preview feature in uh, Java 15. So Amber is gradually delivering features to the Java language. And don't forget uh, one of the final four oh. of the JDK feature face-off. Sorry, I forgot to record. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Record are to me so convenient that I'm basically considering that they're already a standard feature, even though that's not true. Record are still in preview. Yep. So thanks to Humber, we'll have records. And don't worry, we have plans to cover all of these topics in much more detail in future episodes. Yes. So today we're just giving a very quick overview, but the goal is to uh, go deeply and discuss with the architects in charge of all those projects later on in an upcoming episode. So another one, uh, and a big one, is uh, Project Valhalla. 
Valhalla's goal is to evolve and adapt the Java platform to cope with modern hardware. Valhalla will introduce inline classes, which are heterogeneous data aggregates. The idea is that inline classes are giving up some key characteristics of Java objects, mainly uh, identity and mutability, but in return they get new benefits around memory. Accessing inline classes will be way faster. Uh, inline classes will also enable a flatter memory layout and improve the memory density. It's the famous uh, code like a class works like a hint. So it's kind of being able to create your own primitives. And will literally touch almost every part of the platform in the language. That's correct. Valhalla will touch the GVM, but also the Java language as developer will have to create those inline classes. So the Java C compiler will also be impacted. Then there's the migration of existing API and libraries such as collection, uh, streams, and so on. Uh, the generics will also uh, be impacted. So it's, it's really a huge project. Another one is Project Loom, which aims to reduce the complexity of building high-throughput concurrent applications. It does this by introducing a new Java entity known as uh, Virtual Threads, and they're cheap, so you can spit up millions of them, and you don't have to worry about having to make the trade-off of writing asynchronous code. Right. Next up is Project Panama. The goal of Panama is to enable safer, easy, and performant access to native code. It has two core building blocks, the Foreign Memory API and the Foreign Linker API. The first one, the Foreign Memory API, will allow Java programs to safely and efficiently access foreign memory outside of the Java heap. Then we have the Foreign Linker API that will provide a safe, strongly typed, pure Java access to native code. So combined together, those two API will provide access to native data and native function in a way that is safer, performant, and easier to use than the whole GNI approach. The initial scope of Panama is C libraries on X64 and Arch64, and over time it's expected that Panama will add support for additional platforms and foreign functions written in language other than C. So those two API, the Foreign Memory API and the Foreign Linker API, constitute the main deliverables of Panama, but there are additional efforts going on. On the tooling side, we have Gextracts, who basically takes the header files of a given native library to mechanically generate the native method handles needed to invoke from Java that library. In addition, under the Panama umbrella, we have the Vector API, whose goal is to express vector computation that will be compiled at runtime to optimize vector hardware instruction, the end goal being obviously to obtain improved performance. So that's Panama. In a nutshell, Panama will enrich the interaction between the Java virtual machine and foreign APIs. Yeah, and one of the really cool things about Panama is it will better position Java to take advantage of many of the AI ML libraries that have been written and frameworks that are out there. What you may not know is a majority of those are actually written in native code, C or C++, not Python. Yeah. Um, let's see. So we've talked about Panama. We've talked about Loom, um, Valhalla. Um, we, we got the, the, newest, uh, the newest kid on the block. Yeah, Leiden. So Leiden is a, new, is a new project. It has been announced a few weeks ago, and Leiden will introduce the concept of a static image to the Java platform. The goal of a static image and the goal of Leiden is to tackle some of the long-standing issues that Java is facing. That is the slow start of time, the slow time to peak performance, and also the large footprint of Java application. Now, those are issues, but uh, this is also relative in the sense that, for example, if you are using JLink, you can already today greatly reduce the footprint of your Java application. But still, we can go further than that. Slow startup time is also something that is being addressed constantly by the GVM performance team. Uh, AppCDS, for example, is a good uh, technique to uh, reduce the startup time. But Leiden is tr is, it will go further than that. It will introduce this concept of static image. So a static Im image is basically a standalone uh, program, standalone application. So just think a native executable that is derived from a Java application. And that static image will run your uh, application and just that, nothing else. Why? Because it lives in a closed world. Uh, and it's this closed world assumption that gives the ability to basically ahead of time compile uh, that Java application into a native executable. And this is great for workloads like serverless, functions as a service, uh, short-lived microservices, um, because Java is one of the most performant languages out there when it gets to peak performance, but it can take a little while to get there sometimes, um, which is where static image comes in. Where does Graal VM fit into this? That's a good question. So when we say static image, you can think about Graal VM's native image. The concept and the end result are very similar. So Leiden will standardize the concept of static image into the Java platform, and once this is done, we can expect that RealVM will evolve to implement that specification. 
So Leiden has just been announced a few weeks ago, but we will cover Leiden in more details uh, in a future episode of this podcast. Well, you can definitely say there's a lot going on. Yeah, and those are just some of the projects. There are more projects. Uh, Scara, for example. So in a nutshell, OpenGDK has been using since the early days Mercurial as the source code management solution. Scara has been investigating a more modern solution, and that is Git. In addition, Scara has also looked at potential Git hosted solution. GitHub has been selected. And finally, the Scara team has also developed additional tooling on top of Git to basically match with the workflow that are used today in the OpenGDK community. So Scara is just one of the technical topics that we will discuss, but clearly we have many that we plan to discuss in this uh, podcast. Now we should probably uh, discuss a little bit about the whole Inside Java effort, uh, but also the Move by Java initiative that we started some times ago. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you may know, Java turns 25 this year. And in May, uh, we had an event to celebrate the 25th birthday. And we really want to celebrate all year long. So we came up with a theme uh, called Moved by Java, which we think signifies how much of an impact Java has had on the world and how it really helps move the world forward. I did my own super scientific study and I went to the job boards of the Fortune 100, which is the 100 largest companies in the US, and 98 of them were hiring Java developers. Just an incredible statistic that's a testament to um, how ubiquitous Java really is. And so we hope that the Moved by Java theme does it justice, and we plan on celebrating all year long um, with that theme. As part of that, we launched Inside.Java, which is a news aggregator. And why don't you tell us a little bit about that, David? Yeah, so Inside Java. So uh, we realized that the GPG team is producing a lot of technical content. And uh, that content is spread across multiple venues. So we are talking about uh, the mailing list. We are talking about uh, dedicated uh, blog posts. Some of that content is on wiki pages. Or also some content is just a, a recording of a session that was given in a conference. That content is very useful, but that content is also very hard to find. So we came up with the idea of Inside Java, make it easy to find that technical content. We didn't want to replicate existing content as, for example, if, let's say, uh, the State of Loom document is on the OpenGDK site, it has to stay there and it has to evolve there too. So Inside.java is a site that is aggregating technical content produced mostly by GPG staff. But now we also see GPG engineers blogging directly on Inside.java. To recap, Inside.java aggregates existing content, it hosts new content, and it also makes it easy to locate that content. So that was the first step. We also talked about doing a podcast and to be fully transparent, we first came up with the podcast ID and then the idea of Inside Java. But anyway, so why doing a podcast? A podcast is now an old, a quite old medium, but studies show that they are getting more and more popular. But more importantly for us, podcasts are very nice because they provide a different way of producing and consuming uh, content. For us, it's sometimes easier to arrange a one hour chat over Zoom with one engineer working on a given topic with the idea of sharing the latest evolution on that particular topic instead of waiting a conference to talk about that topic. So it's easier to arrange that one hour chat instead of asking that person to prepare and deliver a session for a conference. We know that preparing a conference talk is a lot of work. We are also tied to conference schedule to give some updates and so on. So it's not always that convenient. Uh, on the other hand, having an informal chat to discuss some updates, some snapshot update is something pretty uh, easy to do. So that's why we thought that doing a podcast on the Java platform would be uh, very useful. And clearly, uh, that podcast is something that complements other mediums, such as written content and conference session. And obviously, we will uh, continue uh, to do that too. We will continue to participate to conference, uh, virtual conference and physical conference, one that will be uh, possible. So in this podcast, we will discuss new features such as the one we mentioned earlier, Project Loom, Amber, Valhalla, and so on. Those new projects will get a lot of air time, but that doesn't mean that we will not uh, look at existing uh, feature. For example, we plan to have an episode dedicated solely on security, what has been done in terms of security over the last two years, We'll have an episode on performance and so on. Uh, we also plan to discuss less known topics that have been added in the Java platform in the, in the last few releases. Those kind of things that are also uh, quite practical and applicable today for any Java developers. We also plan uh, to discuss topics that are important but, but rarely discussed. For example, we are planning an episode with someone from the Javadocs teams. Documentation is a big deal. 
we are all using Javadocs night and day, but that's the kind of topics that are uh, rarely uh, discussed. Uh, what are the challenges of writing and maintaining the Javadocs for the Java platform? What are we doing to improve the Javadocs user experience? How does Javadocs evolve to cope with the new Java language features? And so on and so on. So in a nutshell, in this podcast, we'll have a, a lot to talk about. And the nice thing is that we also have access to the engineers that can discuss those topics in details. Yeah, you, you mentioned one of the differentiators of this podcast is access to the people who, who build Java. And I don't think that can be understated. I, I don't think there's a team on this planet that knows more about Java than, than this team. And that's what Inside Java is really all about to gain a deeper understanding of the Java platform and to become better developers and architects ourselves by learning directly from the experiences and wisdom of the people who are building the platform. Yep, we'll have many guests. In addition, we might also have special hosts. Wouldn't it be cool to have, for example, Dr. Deprecator hosting an episode? Who knows? So that's Inside of Java and our new podcast. Now we should explain where that Inside of Java name comes from. Yeah, the name Inside Java comes from an American expression known as Inside Baseball. The expression Inside Baseball originated as a style of play in the sport of baseball, but it's evolved over time to really mean a deep understanding of a particular topic. And we felt like the point of Inside Java and this podcast was to gain a deeper understanding of Java. So the name really just seemed to fit. Yep. And as a European without any baseball background, I can tell you that inside of Java give us the idea that we'll get to see the inner working of Java and have access to the team behind the platform. Exactly. But that certainly doesn't mean we won't have people on the podcast from, uh, from outside the team as well. So if you would like to be on the show uh, or have questions or feedback, please just let us know. Go to inside.java forward slash contact. Okay. We should now wrap up our first episode. So we gave an overview of Inside of Java, an overview of the Inside Java podcast and what we plan to achieve. And in fact, we already have several episodes that you can listen to. Please make sure to subscribe to the podcast using your favorite podcast application. And it's like GitHub. We do like stars. So please make sure to rate the podcast. Also, make sure to follow at Java on Twitter and to subscribe to the Inside of Java RSS feed. So Chad, any closing words? Yeah, only that we are honored and excited to bring this podcast to you. Uh, we're really excited about the lineup that we have. And somebody recently told me that Java felt more vibrant than it has in a really long time. And it really does feel like a great time to be a Java developer. And I think all of us can be proud to be in the Java community. So stay tuned for more. And thanks for listening to the Inside Java podcast. Thanks. Bye.